beautiful day, beautiful morning, the day that the Lord has made. It tells us to rejoice and to be glad in it, not to frown upon it, not to look down on it, but we thank God for this beautiful day. We're going to open up, and we're going to ask that you participate with us as we do our devotion. Uh, we're going to sing praises unto God. We're going to have some scriptures that will help equip us. We're going to pray, and we may have an opportunity for a testimony. So let us, in this devotion time, let us prepare our hearts to, to worship God. Amen. Amen. How many come to worship him? Amen. Come on, you come to worship him. Have, have he been good to you? Amen. He's been good. Sister Patsy, he's been good to us. Amen. Amen. Sister Patsy, say, my heart will tell you about it. Amen. He has been good. Amen. And I got an amen from my husband here. God is good. God is good. Amen. The choir will um, open up in our devotion. So let's go in. Um, expectation. We expect God to move. Um, I heard someone say, we got to act like God going to do what he said he was going to do. So let us do that. Amen.
and energy of praising him in the, our devotional scripture reading. Deacon Harris is going to um, open up with our scripture followed by our first prayer, Deacon Juan. Good morning, Bethany. My scripture this morning come from Psalm 25, verse 1 through 7. Unto the Lord do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let, me, let not my enemies trumpet over me. Ye let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed within transgression, without call. Show me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Unto thee do I wait all day. Remember, O Lord, the tender mercy and thy loving kindness, for thou have been ever of old. Remember not the sin of my youth, nor my transgression. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for the goodness sake of the Lord. My scripture this morning comes from Psalm 25, 1 through 7. May God have the blessing reading here in the understanding of his holy word. Good morning, saints. We, we're, may we bow our heads, please. Oh, God, we come humbly today to hear your word on these four walls. The Reverend Benson will dedicate to all the words that we need to listen. And God, when me and everybody learn something about it, especially about you, God. And I want to say a special prayer for the whole country that right now it's very hard, God, for everyone. It's not going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. We just got to have faith and prayer and trust in you and lead us and guide us. And the little ones, we need to take care of them. There's a lot of them that, uh, oh, God, they need help. They really need help. God, we ask you all, the, all types of things I wish I could say, God. But we leave it in your hands to take care of us one day at a time. We thank you, we adore you, and we need you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Harris, for the scripture, Psalms 25. Love that song. Amen. One that I stand on. Amen. And also, Deacon Juan, for that prayer. Our second scripture comes from the book of Psalms also. Psalms number 66, verse 16, it says, Come in here, and I will declare unto you, all ye that fear the Lord, what he has done for my soul. Amen. Amen. That's Psalm 66, verse 16. Uh, 
our prayer, second prayer, will come from Deacon Clark. Get by your heads, please. <clears throat> Father God, we come once again. Thank you. First of all, just thank you, Lord. So many of us have gone through the week with trials and tribulation, and you blessed us. Yes. You got us here at a new day, thank new you. week, dear Lord. Lord, we can't thank you enough, dear Lord. Your Lord, we ask that you bless those that are here, bless the ones who want to be here but could not. Bless those that are still going through, dear Lord. Lord, we ask for world peace, dear Lord. And we ask that you just forgive us of our sins, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask prayer for all that are here, dear Lord. We ask you bless them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank you all for your presence. We thank you that you come to honor and to worship God. Amen. We come to honor and to worship him. We thank him for his presence in our life. This will conclude our devotion. Amen. And we thank God. I do just want to say as we close our devotion, this young man right here, I've seen him for the last few weeks. He has blessed my soul. Amen. And he comes along past that. I think that's the young man you referred to um, that come. Young man, bless you. Bless you for coming and, and um, to continue to come. Um, that God may speak to your heart. Amen. It's just a joy to see you every day. Amen. So we thank God for our you, and we thank God for each of you. Now let us go higher in our worship and our service. God bless you. We're now back into the hands of the pulpit. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Ray. I want to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. God bless you. We're grateful for the privilege of being alive. You got to be alive to enjoy anything, amen? So the first thing, you are alive in Christ, and we thank God for that. We're going to have our reading of our Articles of Faith, which we usually put two on the back of the program, so you can know in what you believe. We've covered justification and regeneration. This morning we're looking at sanctification and perseverance of the saints. Articles of faith. What do you believe in? And you need to know what you believe in. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in the triunity of the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And without him, we are unsaved and lost. So there's a lot to know about the word. So when someone is questioning you with a big word like sanctification, you might understand what it is when you have read this article and then read the scriptures behind it, amen? So we're gonna invite you now to stand as we read the articles of faith, what we believe in. We ought to believe in something. You don't believe in anything, you'll fall for everything. These are the words, we're gonna read them together, sanctification, we believe the scriptures. So here we go, one, two, three. We, we believe, believe the scriptures, scriptures teach that sanctification, that sanctification is the process by which, according to the will of God, we are made partakers of his holiness, that it is a progressive work, that it is begun in regeneration, and that it is carried on in the hearts of believers by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, the sealer and comforter in the continual use of the appointed means, especially the word of God, self-examination, self-denial, watchfulness, and prayer. All right, now pers perseverance of saints. We believe the scriptures teach that such only are real believers as endure to the end, that their preserving attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors, that a special providence watches over their welfare, and they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of these articles of faith, sanctification, and perseverance of the saints. Amen. Reverend Turner will lead us now to the throne of grace, and this is something you ought to keep these articles of faith somewhere in a folder so when someone asks you uh, about sanctification, justification, regeneration, they're big words, but you can refer back to what you believe. Did you see what, what I liked about sanctification? 
it is a progressive work. We're all a work in progress. Amen. You're not perfect, and I'm not, but we are in progress, under construction by the Holy Spirit. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus, God. We come thanking you first, Lord, for bringing us in this place, God. We come thanking you for our young people as they are coming in greater and greater numbers, God. We come asking for hands on deck, God, not just in the young people, God, but we are asking for our men to return to the church, Lord, all ages, God, because we need the leadership and the firmness that they come with, God. And we cannot do this just as women raising children, God, but we need that dominance, God, back in the church, God. Bring back real leadership, God, yeah. real conviction, real salvation, God, that we will not turn back to our old ways, God, real repentance, God. Yeah. We're asking for all these things, God, because it is a need of today's times, yeah. God. As the suffering yeah. is great, yeah. the anointing Hallelujah. needs to be even more greater on us today, God. So I ask that you reach into each leader here in Bethany, God, that we reach outside the four walls by the love that we display, great, God. Great, great. We thank you, God, for the love that you have given us, God, not because we deserve it, because we we don't deserve it, God. And we just want to thank you for being sovereign and merciful, God. Thank you for being omnipotent and knowing all things, God. Because you know all before we even got here, God. You read the script for all of us, God. Help us in our walks, God. Help uh, the pastor whose church, uh, Bernard, he, he needs help, God. And we ask yeah. for your assistance and bring all the people who can aid him, God. Not yeah. just us at Bethany, God, but the, the friends that he has made in the ministry, God. Yeah. Bring all of us together to bring his house of God back up, Lord, because it's for your glory, God. Yeah. All the things that we do, we do it in your glory. On to you, Lord. Yeah. Help us reach out and touch hearts and not just do religious ceremony, God. We thank you, God, for all the things that you're going to do in today's service. Bless the preach word, God. Bless the musicians and those who are attached to each one of us, God, who need to know you, God. Bring us to a place of knowing you, God. Outside of our religion, God, bring us to you as the creator, God. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am thankful you are here today, amen. amen. Grateful to God to see you alive, well, and doing as well as you are, amen. Yes. Things aren't perfect, not for any of us, but we do the best we can with what we have. Is that right? Amen. And God has been good to us. We're gonna open it up now for where my deacons for spiritual triage. You know what that is? If you came hurting, if you came in need of help, we're going to anoint you and pray for you right now. When I go wait for the service to unfold, we're going to pray for you right now. This is the emergency room of heaven. Amen. And we can pray and ask God to touch you. If you're hurting, if you're suffering, if you're worried about an ailment, you're worried about a situation, deacons got their holy all. They're going to stand out here. And if you need to be anointed before we get started, I don't want you to sit up there and hurt all the, all the service. I want you to get relief right now. So come as you are. Come as you are. One over here. One over here. All those. And if you can't come, they can rail. Anoint you from where you sit. I hear Jesus. Anybody who wants to may come. Whosoever will. I feel Jesus.
my soldier. Jeremiah says, just like fire, shut up in my bone. My soldier burn within me. Because I sense and feel the full anointing of his presence in this place where we have gathered together to worship him. This is better than anything you could be doing all week to worship God. Oh my soul! come to worship him in spirit and in truth. Only way to worship God is in spirit and in truth. Your true identity is revealed in the spirit of God. He's put in you. He's going to give us a new name when we get to glory. New name, new song, brand new robe, everything new. Old things pass away. The scripture in Psalm says, let everything that have breath, breath, breath praise breath. the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, when we go into glory, we're going to see some things we've never seen before. Huh? I mean, I, I really think we're going to see all kinds of living creatures praising God. Amen? Amen. Living creatures, angels, all kinds of created beings. Of all the creation on the earth, only 10%. Uh, that we have here are known. 90% of the things God made are still unknown. Yes. Insects, bugs, sea creatures down below. I said, I'm not swimming down there to find out what they look like either. They probably swallow me as an hors d'oeuvre. But God has made some strange things, but everything will be praising God. Amen. Everything that have what? Breath. Breath. Will Thank be praising Lord. God. All right, we're going to praise God this morning. I want to thank God for, we got a blessing, we prayed last week for one on this side to get a blessing, and we prayed for one on this side to get a financial blessing. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Did you remember the short-term memory you have? All right. We got blessing. I want, where's Rose? Rose is here. Rose is going to give us a short testimony. Come on, Rose. Come on up, baby. She got a blessing. Say amen. amen. And this is not the first blessing Rose got. Amen. She can tell you herself. Good morning, Bethany Church. Morning. I, I want to thank God. I want to thank God because God is a way maker. I know some of us know, some of us know not, but um, February 26th, our vehicle was parked in front of our home and it got sideswiped by a, a pickup dually carrying a 30-foot trailer with a car on top and it just sideswiped our vehicle. And um, we've been struggling with the insurance company to make good, you know, on the claim that we filed. And I thank God for perseverance yes. because of, you know, many, many phone calls and those who went up to bat for us. I thank God for those two. And um, I got a phone call Friday at almost 2 p.m. telling me they will honor the claim. <laughs> so now I can call my truck. <laughs> So we thank God. We thank God. Amen. Amen. Can God do it? He can do it when nobody else can. And they sure don't like to pay claims these days. Amen. They want to get out of it and do everything they can. But we thank God the money is coming. Amen. Amen. Everybody like to hear that, don't you? The money is coming. Don't you like that? Make you smile. Amen. <laughs> Well, we're going to thank God for Rose and Juan. Now we're going to do um, 
an impromptu worship on this one song. Amen? I said, what does that involve? Last week I asked the men to join the ladies up here to sing. Didn't I say that? All right. As I used to say, I don't say that anymore. You say, if I'm lying, I'm dying. But I ain't going to say that. I'm not lying. Amen. I asked the men to join the sisters. Amen. Now, I want to thank God for Brother Harris and Deacon, Deacon Harris and Deacon Clark, Amen. but I want the rest of the men who are going to join us on this song. When they get the hang of it, you come on up and stand up here and sing. Amen? Amen. Huh? When we were in high school, somebody started off singing and everybody started joining in. Is that right? I'm going to join in. I'm going to do that this morning. I cut up last week. But uh, you have, men have a way of joining in when they're singing fight songs. Amen? Is that right? So we want you, if you want to come now, come and join us. I'm going to bless the Lord. How's it go? I'm going to bless the Lord with me. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to bless the Lord with me. Y'all can get that. I'm going to bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. And we say, Hallelujah. Come on, come on, man. Ah. My babies are coming. Look at my babies coming. Ah. Come on, we're going to praise him. We got to praise him.
Praise the Lord. That's what you want when you come to church. You don't want to be sitting up there dull and dry and angry and hurting. You want to lift up the name of Jesus. You want to thank God. Well, let the choir catch their breath. Because I got to catch mine. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Sits high and he looks low. And he's concerned about everybody. He wants a personal relationship with everybody. Not just the preacher, not just the choir, not just the musicians or deacons or issues. He wants a personal relationship with you. He loves you that much. Just think about it. He called you into existence before you knew yourself. And he made you before he formed you in your mother's belly. So he told Jeremiah, I knew you before I put you in your mama's belly. That's some existence, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. How could you be in existence physically and be outside your mama's womb? The only place you can exist like that is in the mind of God. And his words are quick and powerful. So he spoke you into existence and you just hovered in his mind. And then when your, when your, when your daddy smiled and got your mama's phone number. <laughs> uh, that, that, that started a courtship. Amen. And it wasn't long before you came along. Amen. And God called you into existence from where he had you in the mind, the family in mind, the time in mind, the place in mind. And the color and the sex in mind. Amen. God made you with a certain sex and you don't get to change that. I'm sure talking now. When God made you, he made you the way he wanted you to be. If you stay that way, you'll get blessed. And don't try to change your, your sex and then compete against the women in the Olympics. Knowing you can beat them, amen. So I'm not for any of that mess. Amen. Now we're ready to hear from the choir. I want to thank the men who are coming to the choir. And I want to thank the men that are going to come to the choir in the name of Jesus.
see my heart. You see, I was close and in my right mind. I'm glad he didn't. Didn't let me sleep tonight. Well, he woke me, woke me, woke me right on time.
bless you. Keep blessing me. How can they hear without a preacher? The word has to be taught and preached and declared. Amen. But I like to have a little activity, a little worship. Amen. That's just as good as that Louisiana gumbo I had. You got to feel it. Amen. You not only taste it, but you feel it. Amen. I went down to Louisiana for the first time. Amen. I had some gumbo I'll write that. at Grandma. Was it Grandma Landry's house first? Yes. yes. Boy, that was some good stuff, man. You're talking about some good show enough gumbo. Yeah. And then Reverend Randall knew I was coming and had his mama yeah, make some more gumbo. Yeah. I said, come on, have some gumbo. I said, this must be a, a rite of passage in this yeah, yeah. You gotta have some gumbo. I got in his gumbo and I started eating that at a rich flavor and smoke started coming out of my ear. <laughs> I said, I ain't never had no gumbo like this. This show sure enough is losing out of gumbo. But I want to tell you one thing. They sure know how to cook down there. Amen. And when you come to church, you ought to show sure get something out of what God has done for you. Amen. So we are thankful to God. We won't be long, but we'll be long enough to know you've been to church. And we try not to insult your intelligence because we know you're going to read your Bible when you get home. Amen. Amen. All right, some people looking down at their shoes when I said that. But you're going to read your Bible because you don't want your cell phone to outnumber the touches it gets versus the touches your word of God gets. Amen. Amen. We do touch our cell phone more than we touch our Bible. And you don't get a cut, or a cut or excuse by saying, I got the Bible on my app. You may have it on your app, but are you reading it? Are you reading it on your app? Amen. So, so that's the real issue. But we're going to talk a little today. And um, maybe at the end of the service, we'll let you see the a Sunday school lesson acted out through uh, the video by... C.C. Winer, the Sunday school lesson was about the alabaster box that Jesus, uh, that Mary brought Jesus and broke and anointed him for his burial, really. But she was at, he was at dinner and she used her tears to wash his feet and her hair, her long hair to wipe his feet. And then she broke a bottle of spikenard and they just called it NAR, N-A-R-D, spikenard came from a four-foot plant in the Himalayas, and they had to go up once a year when they could breathe in that thin air to get that little plant, and then it cost a year's wages. And there's nothing you have in your cologne closet, uh, your perfume, huh, that costs a year's wages. And like I asked the Sunday school, if you did pay a year's wages, why did you pay that much? But the lady, bless the Lord because she saved a year of her wages and paid on that and that's the only time Jesus was anointed for his burial when he got spikenard while she put it on his head and she put it on his feet and everybody got mad at how much money she spent mm. you got folk in your house right now if you spend too much they'll let you know it. is that right I don't want to start a fight but They'll let you know you spent too much. 
But in this case, Jesus said, you'll always have the poor among you. You can do for them at any time. But she did what was a rich thing. She anointed my body for burial. And wherever this gospel is preached, the wonderful sacrifice she's going to, amen, be remembered for. The remembrance. I'm doing a, a test with my young people in my Sunday school class. I want them to do something nice for their mother or grandmother for Mother's Day. And I told them, I want you to experience what it is to give rather than to receive. And children don't get enough of that because most of the time they wanted to receive. Is that right? Yes. We want to receive right now. What you going to give me? Yeah. But the Lord says it's more blessed to do what? Yeah. So someone like your mom or grandma who has done so much for you, I've challenged the children to think of a gift they can get their mom or grandmother or split it between them and give them something and tell me how it makes them feel to give. God put a blessing in giving. And it is, if it's more blessed to give than receive, then you ought to want to get, do more giving than receive. So we have that coming up and I want you to pray for the young people. We have to teach them how, how to be blessed in what they have and learn how to value the things that are worked for. Some children have no concept of money because there's not enough to go around. And that's not their fault. But they do need to have a value on money and when it's time to give. Because when you learn to give, you're going to learn one of the greatest things in the world. Why? Because what does John 3.16 tell us? For God so loved the world. What he, he did what? He did what? He gave. It starts off with giving. If you don't learn what it is to give, you'll never, you'll always be selfish and, and trying to sell Bibles for $60. Uh, well, let's not go there. But you, you, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is do right. Live by what's in the Bible, not what's on the Bible. You don't have to endorse the Bible. We don't need the Bible to be endorsed. Jesus already wrote it. I mean, let me stop there because I'll get sidetracked. I want you to turn in your Bibles now. You brought your Bibles, they ought to be in your hand, your head, your heart. And Ursha's, we're going to order new Bibles so we have everybody will have a Bible when we say, did you bring your Bible? It ought to be one of three places. Where? Heart and your head. Uh -huh. Your hand, your head, and your heart. All of them start with H, all right? Let's go first of all. We want to go to the book of First Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19, there's a nice little story there, nice little story there about a prophet who was threatened by a queen, and if you were threatened by this queen, you wanted to get out of town, because she was notorious for doing evil, amen. And if I tell you her name, you will find there's no other person named that in the Bible, nor have you named your little niece or aunt or child by her name. She got an ugly name. Her name is Jezebel. All right. Nobody says, look at little Jesse. Uh -huh. Now, Jasmine is a good name, but Jezebel, woo, you don't want a name like that. Let's look a little at Jezebel because Jezebel is notorious. We're going to start at verse 1. And it says, And Ahab, he was the king, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. He made it rain. He slayed her prophets. She was mad. And with all, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel, you see that name? Yeah. Sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, Here's what the woman did. She got in his business. So let me do, uh, so let the gods do to me, and more, she said also, if I make not thy life, I, I'm saying this right, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. In other words, let the Lord kill me if I don't kill you first. What kind of woman talks to a man like that? You think about that for a moment. She really is out of line because her husband 
was under her government. Hmm? That's what happens when you get the order, disorder in the home and the wife is taking over. I'm touching on somebody now. I'm dipping in their business. But the Lord meant for the man to be the priest, the prophet, and the protector. And when he relegates that duty to her, this is the kind of thing you get. A Jezebel telling another prophet, I'm going to kill you. Now let me move on because I want to go on. I mustn't keep you too long. Let me bring this up. And when he saw that he arose and he went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and I've got so many markings in here, and it's his servant there, and he left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, is, is enough now, O Lord, Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. I want to talk about what to do and how to deal with negative thoughts. What to do and how to deal with negative thoughts. We all are going to be persuaded one day by something negative. Telling us to be in doubt, be in defeat, be in denial. But here is a lesson about a prophet, no less who called fire from heaven... But when he got a note from a lady, he ran. Father, bless us now to understand your word, the wisdom of it, the miraculous healing power of it. Lord, the stable and sustaining power of your word, that it might be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Teach us now this word in Jesus' name. Amen. There had been a contest on Mount Carmel as to which God could answer by fire. And the test was let the home team get the, the receiving kickoff first. Well, that meant the prophets of Baal, 450 of them, tried to start a fire with their false god. They lanced themselves, they pre danced around for hours trying to get fire from heaven. And Elijah mocked them and said, maybe your god is taking a lunch break. Why don't you holler a little louder? And you know, when somebody taunts you, you really get mad. So they start lancing, meaning they start cutting themselves, let blood gush out. But their God didn't answer. And after a while, he said, now that's enough of that. Tear down the altar and let's build an altar unto God. And when he did that, he called on the God of heaven to answer by fire. And that fire was answered when the Lord, can you see him in, in space like a laser beam coming down to the planet, right on the mountain, and then right on the altar, and then hitting that altar, burning up the bullock, burning up the wood, burning up the rock, and then licked up all the water around it. God showed up and showed out, and he showed them what he could do. Now that made, and then he said, now slay all the false prophets of Jezebel. And they did. And then, then her husband, Ahab, I don't know why I want to say knucklehead. <laughs> but that's what he was. He went home and told mama, huh? They, they killed all your prophets. Looked like he, he should have been in charge, really. But he wasn't. He went on and she said, she writes this note that we just read to Elijah. So let me, let the gods do to me and more if by tomorrow this time you are not dead. And when he saw that, he got scared. Mm. And he decided it's time, as we used to say when I was growing up, to book. Mm. It's time to leave. And he ran from her. Sometimes negative thoughts can put us on the run. Because somehow we're not prepared for the negativity that it brings. Someone once said that a negative thought is 80 times more powerful than a positive one. People can tell you, yes, you can, yes, you can. And somebody comes and say, oh, no, you can't. I had a cousin like that. <laughs> or this and that happened. And they will bring you down so quickly that your faith will wane. And God wants you to have faith. Even as a mustard seed that you can move a mountain and you can say to that mountain, be removed. But when you allow the negativity and the negative thought 
to come into your mind. It eats away like dye in a pail, and it just grows and makes you weak in your knees, weak in your faith, and weak in your resolve. And you will find yourself retreating rather than advancing. God made the armor for God and all the armor for advancement. There's nothing, we talked about that in Sunday school, there's nothing in the armor of God for retreat. Right. Helmet is of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, all of these things are things, y'all put this camera on that when you're moving that uh, camera around so the men, people outside can see. So that they can see the helmet is for the helmet of salvation. And what, what's, what, what Elijah lacked was a defense mechanism. That with the devil was coming out him with the wiles, W-I-L-E-S, all the things that the devil will throw, darts, deceit, doubt, defeat, uh, denial, dejection, death, all of them, the defense lined up against you when you make up your mind. That's why you need a helmet of salvation so these negative things won't penetrate your mind. The mind is a terrible thing to waste and it's a terrible thing to put on for so long the negative energy. I can't do that. And pretty soon you'll convince yourself you can. So we need a countermeasure for the defense when it lines up with you. Defeat, dejection, doubt, difficulties, denial, uh, distress, depression. All of those little darts of the devil, he lines them up against you. And sometimes God has to come and whisper in your ear, I'm going to call the play. I got another play, huh? Where's my football? I got, a, I got an audible for you. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to let you fake one way and throw the other. That way and then throw out like that. Huh? We know football. Why don't you know Jesus? That's right. You know how to watch him move. Why don't you watch Jesus move? He got more moves than Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith. That's right. Amen? Amen. You enjoy watching them? Jesus can move. So he'll whisper another play for you. So here was, here was, here was Elijah saying, I better leave. And the Bible says he went into the wilderness, dropped off his servant, and then he went a day's journey or so, even into the wilderness, and he got under a juniper tree. And in that juniper, under that juniper tree, the Bible says he made a crazy prayer. Now, it doesn't say crazy, but it gives a prayer, and you know it's crazy when you hear it. You know why? Because he sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might what? Now, does that make any sense? Uh, that's like suicide, a, per, uh, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. That's all suicide is. That boy burned himself up the other day in front of the courthouse for nothing. Put an accelerant on him and then started with his head and burned himself up out there for nothing. Why would you do something like that? Your life is too precious. You didn't grant yourself life. You didn't pull yourself out of a rabbit. God made you. And he made you distinguishable. And your days are numbered according to what God said. Some people who are sick do suicide. But there's nothing wrong. That, there's something wrong when a Christian decides they're going to take their own life. Uh -huh. By what did Job say? The Lord giveth and the Lord does what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. You do not name your time when you're going to leave. You can have a, what is it, a directive to physicians that say, don't let me live artificially. But let me die naturally. That's called the Natural Death Act. And we do that for people who are making wills and who are going into surgeries and things of that nature. But the whole idea is you don't get to say, I had enough. Who are you to say you had enough? How do you know what God is going to do for you in the end? That's right. So this man requested of the Lord, Lord, this woman is after me. That's enough. I, I've had enough. I'm no better than my father's. Take my life. You know, it's a good thing God doesn't answer all our prayers. Because we can pray some foolish prayers sometimes. And, and, and just the other day, I found myself saying, Lord, hurry up. And I said, oh, excuse me, Lord. <laughs> I, I'm supposed to have patience. And I, I prayed the wrong prayer. But you know how we get impatient? And we waiting on something. And it don't come. And I grab this busy. I said, Lord, can you hurry that up? And then I thought, that was the wrong prayer to pray, Benson. God is making you wait so you learn patience. And patience comes by long suffering. That's right. And the Lord, you know how you make the best food? By letting it slow cook and marinate. Is that right? Got any cooks in here? You don't ever turn it up high as it go and try to cook. You got to let it go with a slow flame. 
saw a brother doing barbecue and they said, what's the secret? He said, well, I start with slow flame and I just let it, huh? And then he put all the herbs and spices and the secret sauce and everything in there. But the whole idea, God is getting you percolate so you can develop. Do you know all your blessings you can't handle if you got them all at one time? This isn't fast food service. This is slow cook service. And the Lord prepares you before he, in, in as much as he's preparing you, he's equipping you before he blesses you. You got to get the lesson before the blessing. Or you won't know how to handle the blessing. God gave you a lot of money right now. We wouldn't see you till next year. After you spent all the money. I need prayer now. Why were you? You won the lotto and didn't come back and give God 10%. Huh? Say, does the Lord get part of your lotto? Well, I heard the late Buckner. It was the late Buckner Fannin say this. He said, he said, Buckner Fannin, he was preaching one of the large churches in San Antonio. Would you, what, would you accept money from the lotto if one of your members, if one of your members won? Y'all look at now. And he thought for a moment, he said, of course I would. The devil had that money long enough. Give it to the Lord. <laughs> the devil had the money long enough. God, we would, God would, if God blesses you, you got to have a lesson before the blessing. And the po point the Lord is making is that it comes and it goes. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. You got to learn how to bless the Lord at all times. So here was Elijah running from a woman, getting a note that caused him to pray a wrong prayer. But God didn't answer that prayer. Sometime when you're too tired, just say, Lord, help me and go on to sleep. Don't, don't try to pray a long, elaborate prayer because the Lord already knows what's on your heart. And the quickest prayer that you can play that's sincere is, Lord, help me. That's what prayer is, the, asking the Lord for his help, thanking him for what he's done, but asking him to help you. So the Lord knew that Elijah was in trouble, so he let him go to sleep. Amen? Some of y'all are missing sleep right now. When you're missing sleep, your brain doesn't function right. When you're missing sleep, you're, de you're detached from reality. And when you get sleep deprivation, you don't even know what you're doing. That's why when you come out of surgery and anesthesia, they say don't sign any contracts in the next 48 hours. Because you won't know what you're doing. God put the man to sleep, and when he put him to sleep, then he sent an angel down with angel food and a cruise of water and told him to rise up and eat and he rose up and ate and went back to sleep. Mm. You still needed rest. You know how important it is for you to have your rest so you can make right decisions? If you kept awake by negative decisions, you haven't prayed in an earnest manner and then rested in the Lord. Amen? Uh, blessed is the man walking out in the counsel of the ungodly. Standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that night, he meditates how long? Day and night. Day and night. You got to think on the word of God. Meditate means to think on and turn over in your mind. Have you ever seen a diamond and how they evaluate a diamond? A diamond sparkles on all corners. And the word of God sparkles on all corners. So when you take the word of God and lift it and look at it and meditate on it, let it come in you and then think on it and pray on it and stare at it, even if you don't understand it. God will begin to open your eyes. He'll begin to open your understanding. And God will give you through the spirit a measure of understanding and wisdom that will give you the equipment you need to withstand the charge and the defense of the devil. You've got to stand firm in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's why you put on the whole armor. That's why you have the helmet of salvation, right. the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the yeah. sword of the spirit of truth, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. If you will, Elijah didn't have any of that, but God loved him anyhow. That's right. And he put him to sleep and fed him again, and the angel told him, rise up and eat for your journey is too long. Yeah. And it took him 40 days, and he finally got to the place of a cave, and he went into that cave. And then the Lord asked him, he sent first the earthquake. And the rocks broke up with the earthquake. He sent the wind and then he sent the fire. But God wasn't in that. All of those things he sent to show his mighty power. But God came in a still, small voice. And that is how you counter the negativity. 
God has a frequency that he speaks on. He called Samuel when Samuel was just a little boy living in the house of Eli. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. He called him four different times. Three times he ran up and asked Eli, thou callest me. He said, I didn't call you. Thou callest me. No, I didn't call you. Thou callest me. No, I didn't. But go back and when he calls you this time, say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. God has a frequency like a radio has a frequency, like a CV, what a CV has a radio frequency, everything. And it's a still, small voice. God came to him, not in the wind, not in the hurricane, not in the rocks, but in it says, what dost thou doest here, Elijah? What are you hiding for? I didn't make you a coward. What are you hiding in this cave for? And he said, I am fearful for the Lord, and uh, Jezebel has slain all the prophets, and I alone have escaped. And we're so easy to think we're the only ones in the situation we're in. And when the devil gets us backed up in that corner, we just turn to putty because we don't know what to do. But you got to call on the name of the Lord. That's why David wrote, I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy of all praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. You've got to have some strength and backbone. You can't let life push you around and bully you into a corner. Here, here was the Lord telling Elijah, boy, I didn't call you to be a coward. Come out of that cave. Come out of that cave and let me show you some of my power. And I'll let you know that I, if I'm with you, I'm more than the world against you. I don't know how the Lord made it like this, but you got to go through this thing called life that's very difficult. In life, you got to cry sometimes. In life, you got to get disappointed sometimes. In life, you got to get hurt sometimes. And the hurt is real. I'm praying for Pastor Bernard Willis who, who lost his wife yeah. this year. I had to bury her. It was my charge to, to give her a funeral. That hurt me so bad because they were such a wonderful couple, 40 years married. They were in this church. And it broke my heart because I know how much they loved each other. I had to cry when I told you all to pray for me as I preached that funeral. And you did. And then to wake up the other day and see on uh, KSAT News that his church had burned down. You lost a wife and your church burned out in the same year. I had to cry again. And my son in the ministry, having all that Job-like experience. But I saw him smiling and said, they may burn the building, but we're still the church. Amen. Amen. We are going to go on anyway. And that's what you got to have, some anyway and anyhow faith. That kind of faith will carry you through the difficulty. I don't know why God made it difficult, but he made it difficult to grow us and to make us stronger. And if he, he sent him through that, he's going to bring him up out of it. He's a strong deliverer. And sometimes he takes you down to bring you up. Uh, the exciting thing of a roller coaster is not just going up, but it's going down, isn't it? And that thing will climb you up and then drop you back down. Life is a roller coaster. But through it all, if you stay seated, if you stay with God, if you keep holding on, he'll take you around, he'll take you up, he'll take you over and curb you back in and land you back safely. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. In his word do we meditate day and night. We'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And what the answer for, for, for Elijah was was not to run but to meditate on God's word. If you meditate on his word, he will make you prosperous. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, Psalms 1 said. Yeah. It will bring forth his fruit. Look at that. In his season. Yeah. There is a particular relationship God has with you that you have a season. That it will be your season one day. You may have weeping in the night. You may have weeping in the morning, but in the late night. But joy will come in the morning. And joy will bring itself a victory of fruits for you. They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And the whole strength of that is to meditate on the word of God. You got to think on it. You got to pray on it. And if you can't do nothing, then stare at it a while and see if God won't open your eyes. Amen. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to know Greek or Hebrew. God will bring you the message in a still, small voice. He'll say, get up and do such and such. Amen. I was taking medicine a long time ago, many years ago, and that medicine had a negative effect on me. I didn't know what, what was happening. And the Lord said, get up and read the drug interactions and side effects. And I got up and read that 
And I said, you know, I'm going to put this medicine down because I believe it's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I put that down and got fatter and fairer and bigger. <laughs> Hallelujah! Because the Lord told me what to do. Yeah. Now, if he can tell me what to do, he can tell you what to do. And you got to get up early enough to listen and see God's face. Amen. Don't get up to look at something crazy on the news. Everything in the news is crazy. Yes. You, you got to get up and meet God in his word yes. to meditate and think That's on right. and to gather your thinking. And, and the mind is such a powerful thing that God made the mind and they're trying to do artificial intelligence to mimic the mind. But the mind is a, a masterpiece by God's design. I was curious about that because the Lord said, we got to, if you will, confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Yes. And I said, well, a belief requires a thought. Mm -hmm. and you got to have a thought in order to believe, and then you got to take that thought and believe on it, act on it, trust on it. So I said, Lord, what is a thought? And it was too rich for me to understand. How does the mind gather a thought? They said there are billions of neurons in our mind, and then they move through the brain cells. And if they will, they have dendrites and all kind of ways they, they communicate. But their mind, they said, we looked at neurons and, and they have portions when there's movement, there's a certain degree of lighting up of those neurons. I can't understand all that, but God put it together in a good way. Yes, so that we think five times faster than I can speak. If I said orange, you already down the road with orange juice already, huh? <laughs> because our mind works like that. God did a marvelous instrument when he made our mind. So man is trying to mimic the mind as he makes artificial intelligence and makes robots with AI and all of those things. But they can never duplicate what God can do because a robot won't have conviction. A robot can't have faith. A robot can't leap over the logic and get to where God wants you. But if you are a saved saint of God, you can believe God at his word with no money in your pocket. You can believe God at his word with sickness in your body. You can believe God at his word when there's no way to get out. But God, through his word, will make a way out of no way. He'll come to see about you when nobody else knows about you. Our God can do anything yes, can. but fail. Right. Elijah came out of that cave and God told him, I got still got work for you. Right. What do you look like dying when I got work for you? <laughs> Somebody pronounces your death, you don't say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. God put me here and God left me here. And God, if he left me here, he's going to use me. Right. God is going to use me in his own way. He can use you in your, in your, in your prime and he can use you in your old age. Right. Huh? And too many of us get all said, it's over now. It's not over now. God can use you when you're older better than he can when you were young. Because when you were young, you were too foolish to listen. You wanted to cut up and dance all night. Drink and carouse. Am I getting close to where you used to live? I'm still next door to it, huh? God said, now that you're old, I can use you. Amen. I was down in the country one time and had a funeral. Old man got up and said, I'm really, I'm really thankful to God I'm old because the Lord is really using me. And I don't do such and such and I don't do this no more. And the preacher's in the, in the roster on the, on the pulpit said, you know, he can't do it no more. He ain't telling no more. <laughs> if he could, he would. <laughs> They, they busted up his testimony. <laughs> well, don't wait till you can't. Just let the Lord use you now. Right. Let him use you now. Elijah was, was encouraged because he says, I left me 7,000 back in Judah that haven't bowed the knee. Right. And when you go back, I want you to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And I want you to anoint one and anoint the other king. And, right. and I want him to go and know I have already had me some people reserved that you don't know about. God has reserves that we don't know about. And only when we follow his word, his will, and his way do we get to see the revelation of God. You got to stay put. And you got to stay waiting on the Lord. You are being slow cooked, not fast cooked. You're being marinated and you're being equipped with the things of God. And patience is the one thing we lack. Because we want God to hurry up and give our blessing. But we need to hurry up and learn our lesson. Then we can get our blessing. That's what God wants out of us. 
too many of us get in a hurry and we think we're supposed to marry somebody and you marry the wrong person. And then you're in a world of trouble. How do I get out of something I've done? I've seen preachers get married a second time and then they call me back. How do I get a, a normal reverend? I said, you should have prayed over that before you went into it. You need no annulment. You should have prayed and asked God. And you got to wait on the Lord to reveal things and to confirm things. And Elijah was so ready to run. He was ready to run, but he wasn't ready to listen. He's like the generation coming behind us, always ready to get some money, but never ready to know the cost that it takes to get money. I declare some young people think you have a money tree in your backyard. They always come in with that hand out. And that's the generation that needs to know God. And it bothers me that the generation X, Y, Z, wherever you want to start, they don't have an understanding of who God is. They took prayer out of the school, but it wasn't taken out of the home. That was voluntarily surrendered. These children don't have any concept of God. That's why we bought these Bible storybooks here. Because when we were little, we learned Bible stories. And when you learn Bible stories, you get a picture, a glimpse of who God is. And you need to have the fear of God in you. So when those bombs start coming over Israel, 30, what, 300 bombs and uh, all kinds of uh, drones and cruise missiles and ballistic missiles, you didn't know if this was the end times. Because they're going to jump on Israel in the end times in the battle of Armageddon. Jesus is the only one who's going to save Israel. You don't know how close we were to the rapture. We still are close to the rapture. We know not the day, nor the time, nor the hour, but we're still close. Because we see the signs of the times. We see the wars and rumors of wars. We see the pestilence. We see those poor babies over in Gaza dying just trying to eat a meal. We see the Ukraine. We see all over Africa. They are shooting and dying. And the rapture can occur at any moment. And we haven't studied and don't know nothing about the rapture. And don't even pick up the newspaper. What a shame that we're living in this time. God is speaking through his word and through the signs of the times. And some of us are oblivious to looking and reading and knowing. And that's why the Lord says, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. I'm, you're not going to know when I show up. If you don't know when I show up, you'd have waited up for the thief. And I'm going to come and I'm going to rapture my people. I'm going to take them back in a twinkling of an eye. In a moment, they will not know what happened. You'll be putting your car keys up to give them to somebody and they'll drop because you'll be gone. Bye -bye. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God is coming back one day. Yes, you got to meditate on his word to know what's happening. To get your house in order. You told Hezekiah, get your house in order, you will surely die and not live. A double negative on that to mean it's going to happen. When God repeats it twice, it's coming. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and cried with a prayer. In other words, he meditated back on God. Lord, have not done what's right. Now, most of us can't pray a Hezekiah prayer because we haven't done what's right. But Hezekiah did. And he cried and prayed and the Lord told Isaiah, turn around. He beamed the prophet, turn around, go back and tell him I've added 15 years to his life. Wouldn't you love to get a reprieve like that? Stop leaving all that money to people who go squander your money. The Lord give you 15 more years, you spend it on yourself. Amen! That's a Texas amen. But Lord bless you, enjoy yourself. You don't have to leave it to people who are going to squander it and mess it up. Gave you gave signs of God 15 more years to live. Because it didn't do him any good because he made a mess of showing the Chaldeans all his treasures. But he did have 15 more years nevertheless. God wants to give you a long life of productivity and a good life, if it's a short one, of doing the best you can with what you have. You ought to be focused on leaving a legacy. And the only way you can do that is by meditating on the word of God. And let his word keep you in peace. That peace that passes all understanding. When you read the word, that's something good when you get up early in the morning and read the word of God. When you read the word of God before you get your day started. The day starts so quick you can't get out of the bed without thinking of something negative. God says, I want you to give me your first fruits. Get up in the morning and give the Lord five minutes of prayer and thought. I want to thank the prayer the prayer group, they've been meeting for five years that they told me. 
Our prayer group every morning from 6 to 6.30 has been meeting five years, meaning we started before COVID started. And they've kept it up. All who've been on the prayer line, raise your hand. All who've been on the prayer line, give them a hand. Give them a hand. These are the folk I depend on. These are my Marines that hit the ground running. And I need something. I say, y'all need to pray over this. Pray for this person. Pray for that person. That's what keeps you going. Otherwise, the negativity like weeds. You see how the weeds are growing in the spring? See how the weeds are growing in your yard or somebody else's? And you got to see all those things growing. God wants you to understand you got to fight to keep those weeds out. The negative thoughts come like weeds. You don't have to want them. They just pop up. But you need this helmet of salvation. And the helmet of salvation is kept by reading and heeding the word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, thank God for Sister Benson and the, choir and the little ones. Amen. We're grateful for them. But I want you to pay attention to what God is going to do for you. Yes. We prayed last week for somebody to be blessed. Sister Rose was blessed. Hallelujah. Now, one person more. We prayed for one person more to be blessed with financial gifts. Amen. Did we not pray for two? Yes. Somebody else is going to get it. Amen? Amen. You ought to be praying that it's you. And if it's not you, you ought to pray for somebody that needs it Amen. to get it. Amen. I want you to see the meditation is what keeps us focused on God. Yes. Thinking, praying, keeping our mind. Old folks didn't have psychology 101 or they didn't go to junior college because in Texas, in the old days, they had Jim Crow laws. And Jim Crow laws only meant if you were black or brown, you went only to the sixth grade. How do I know that? My grandpa went to that. I said, Grandpa, how, did, how long did you stay in school? To the sixth grade. Anyway, in Texas, you find somebody old, and they only went to the sixth grade. That wasn't meant they were stupid. They closed the school so you couldn't learn anything. I'm talking about the majority of the race. I'm just talking the truth. That's right. So when they closed it down, you had smart people that didn't get to reach their potential. Yeah. And the mystery was, how could they get to their potential if you take away from them the learning capacity? which is what they're trying to do right now. Right. Somebody in Florida introduced, I think a senator, and a representative introduced in Florida, a bill that would close the historically black colleges. Yeah. Crazy people. Yeah. You, you, you mean, and now the next one said, we want to close down diversity and equality in medical school. Yeah. You mean to tell me you're going to close down black and brown doctors when they might be the ones to save your life? You don't have any better sense than to close down medical schools or try to keep black people and brown people out of them because you are so racist. Yeah. You, you forgot Charles Drew and uh, discovered blood plasma. Right. You, you forgot saw all these people and Booker T. Washington and all these took the peanut, made 300, or George Washington Carver took that peanut, made 300 different products from it and didn't patent any of them. He gave, said, God, give it, and Lord, take it, give it to everybody. Mama. You can't stop people's minds. You can't stop their mind. What is the matter with America that they're so mean and racist? That's right, that's right. Now, I have to say that a little because they are mean and racist. Yeah. My grandpa was a smart man. He knew how to grow his crops. He read. With the, what little he did, he read. My grandmother didn't go to school. My great-grandmother, his mother, but she taught herself to read. Mm -hmm. Then when it was time to go and I was a little kid, and my mother and father went to the base, and I stayed with grandma, and grandma made some of them good uh, poke bones. And neck bowls. Yeah. And, and then she made some good cake and, and let me lick the bowl. Yeah. Oh, I was in heaven, y'all. Yeah. She said, Ronald, you want that bowl? I said, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> But what grandmama taught me was my Bible verse. Yeah. And the first Bible verse she taught me was Jesus wept. Well. That's all I could remember, huh? Yeah. A subject and a predicate. Jesus wept. Well. And then when I got older, she went to Psalms 119 and 113. I hate vain thought but thy law I do love. Yeah. That captivated me the other morning. I said, what is vain thought? Vain thought is empty thoughts. Vain thought is not just that you're thinking on yourself and you're uh, looking for the fact that you want self-aggrandizement and you're narcissistic, but vain thought is empty thoughts that don't produce anything. And the Lord says, I want you to know that I am a God of productivity. And when you think on my word, when you meditate on my word, I'll make you prosperous. Yeah. I'll make yeah. you prosperous. So you got to think on the word of God, not just to be prosperous, but to be a benefit to God's kingdom in the advancement of that kingdom as you witness to others. Amen. That's what God wants from you. Yeah. He wants that meditation and negativity comes in and we sit down time we see the problem, the defense lined up. I ain't going in. I ain't going to make it. 
You won't know until you try. You won't know until you burst through. You won't know until you pick it up and say, I'm going anyhow. You got to have some anyhow courage. People don't come back from injury because they wish themselves happy. They get up and work every day. They work over that injury, and then when they come back, they can run down that field, do what they need to do. We are so lethargic and lazy and so negative when things don't go our way. If things didn't go our way, or if the, our ancestors' way, then we wouldn't be here. When they were set free, we get ready to come up on Juneteenth. I'm just about through. I got a minute left. Uh, two minutes. I'm a Baptist preacher. <laughs> Juneteenth is coming up. What happened on Juneteenth? Huh? They realized they were free. They realized they were free. They didn't say. They were set free earlier than that, about two years earlier. But it didn't, the news, that they didn't want to do it in Texas because Texas was a rebel state, a confederate state. And in that movement, they said, uh, all those, uh, we're the last state to fall, so all those with slaves, come on to Texas. That's how we're so crazy here. Huh? Did you wonder why we were so crazy? We don't do anything, don't help the, your children get insurance. We leave money, federal money, on the table, and our children are sick. And we do crazy stuff. We, we have nice highways, but we, otherwise we got crazy stuff here. So here we go with this, this thing in, 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 in Texas where they said, well, you know, Texas is the last state to surrender or to bow to, to, uh, to, uh, to the U.S. federal government. So then they get the news, General Granger comes to Port 21 in Galveston, and he has 2,000 troops, and that's the most he could muster, and he goes around telling everybody in the area of Houston and all through East Texas, the slaves are free. They didn't want to hear that. They knew the slaves were free. The slaves didn't know they were free. And they turned the slaves loose. You need to read this on, on, uh, on YouTube. Go back and read it so you'll know it, and you'll know that I'm telling you the truth. That they gave the slaves their freedom, and they told them, all right, get on out. Don't tell you nothing that don't belong to you. They left poor, miserable, no money, and no food, and no way. They had to learn how to cook whatever those things were, Plum nellies or something, they pick something. They had to get greens somewhere and eat for their family. They, and they had to make their way up to north, going up north. A lot of them went to Ohio and the northern countries. And then that was the Underground Railroad to Mexico. I'm getting captivated by what I know, but I'm going to stop. Uh, the whole idea that was Underground Railroad that led to, uh, uh, to uh, the north. And then when they were set free, they went there. And that was the Underground Railroad that led to Mexico. Read your history. Read your history. Already read it. Amen. Amen. They were fighting down the town at, at uh, County Commissioner's Court with our brother, brother uh, Tommy Calvert, over whether they should have a, the black man who was a slave for General Colonel William Travis Barrett mentioned in the Texas history. But they said, well, he was fighting. And then one lady said, well, he was fighting. He wasn't fighting for slavery. He was fighting to be free or something. He, and they, they fought over it. The man fought in the war. He was a slave for Colonel Travis. He took the gun and shot at the enemy. Then when Colonel Travis got killed and fell down the hill, he retreated back into the church and stayed there. That's why he was fighting to save his life. He wasn't fighting to keep slavery. If your master told you to get the gun and let's shoot, you had to get the gun and shoot. And then when your master dropped dead, you say, I ain't got to shoot no more. <laughs> I'm just telling it like it is. Well, that's a lot of things I can cover, but I'm going to stop for the sake of time. I want you to learn the importance of why you're here. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? That's what meditation will bring you. God put you here because you're special. You are special and you're made by God. Huh? And that's why you're here. And, and God has called you for the purpose of glorifying him. You glorify him with how you testify. You glorify him with how you live. You glorify him with how you help others. Right. And stop being so mean. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. That's my Texas amen. We can really get mad. I ain't giving them no, no more money. That's why you got a dollar and 36 cents in your pocket. You haven't learned to share. You're trying to scratch and get that, huh? God says, and then where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? After you leave here, where are you going? Where are you going when this body goes back to dirt? 
Where are you going when ashes, ashes, dust to dust? Where are you going? What is in your spirit that will take you somewhere? You better know Jesus. Amen. And you only know Jesus by meditating on his word day and night and inviting him into your heart and letting him be the Lord of your life. I'm going to stop right there. God wants you to be at peace. Stop being so negative. It gets your energy, distress. It gets anxiety. Most of your sicknesses come from anxiety that you're worried about something. And they said, most of the time you worry about something, 90% of the time it's not going to happen. And you sit up there and worry all night. Got bags under your eyes, waking up, huh? And then all that, you could have gotten some sleep and been fresh in the morning. I worried about that all night long, Lord Jesus. You got you to cheer up. That's why you come to church. That's why you come to church to praise God. When you praise God, you chase the devil off. When you praise God, you get rid of negativity. When you praise God, you get new energy. You'll mount up with wings as eagles. You'll run and not be weary and walk and not faint. God wants to give you that. Who wants to get some energy up? Who wants the Holy Ghost in them? Who wants to give God a praise? God wants you to praise him so you will get out of that negativity. Put on the whole arm of God and let him get you ready for the next day and you can go in there and so shall you be saved from your enemies. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth. Come on, sister. I'm sing that with Be the rock of my salvation. Be song. All the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock. And let, let the joy of my salvation, salvation be exalted. Come on, pass out this mic. Come on, I know Sadana won't sing. This is all over your face. Oh, who's next? Who's next? Come on, darling. And blessed be the rock. Let the rock. Come on, give me some chairs down here. The Lord liveth. Blessed be the rock. And let the God of my salvation be exalted. Come on, sister. I will call upon the Lord. Come on, choir, help her now. Come on, choir. So shall I be saved from my enemy. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Who be next? The Lord, the Lord liveth, blessed be the rock, let the God of my salvation be exalted. All right. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Too much negativity, and we don't get anything done. But if you meditate on the word of God, you'll be prosperous. I'm looking for some prosperity in here. All you got to do is meditate. It's cheap. It's innocent. It's, and the only way you can get to God is by thinking on him and praising his holy name. Amen. Now these young people have challenged each other. They can come up anytime. Isn't that nice? Amen. That they get the message. And they get the message they're welcome in the house of God. Amen. When I was growing up, you just had to be seen and not heard. They take up the chewing gum at the beginning. Tell you to sit there and be quiet. And if you cut, your, if you, if you cut up, they turn those eyeballs. And tell you, you are going to get a beating. Uh, but now we can let these babies come up and say I love Jesus they say that we're going to let, uh, we're gonna let Jeremiah say that is that who? that Jeremiah? alright Jeremiah is here you know Jeremiah is coming he'll put you to shame if you don't get up amen oh, thank you sister Anna thank you so much God is using you and he's got a lot more for you to do. Don't you dare give up. Just keep on keeping on. Amen. 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 All right. Let's see if we can get out of here. All right.
Well, I can't make it all the way out there. Come on up here, Joshua. I mean, uh, Jeremiah. Come on right here. Amen. What you want to say today, man? Uh, thank you for waking me up. Thank you for getting me to church. And thank you for uh, this day. Thank you for everything you've given me. Thank you for my family. That's it. All right. Give him a hand. Give this baby a hand. Amen. And now we have Egypt is coming. All right, sweetheart. Tell us what you want, sweetheart. I just want to thank God for all that he done for us and all that he um, give us, like providing us food on our table and clothes on our back. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm just here um, just to thank God. Um, we've been through a lot um, for the past about two months. Uh, we were having so many like financial issues and things with our cars that were causing us um, a lot of worry. And um, God has blessed us to get our cars fixed. God has blessed us um, in a lot of ways with our illnesses that we were going through. And I just want to keep praying for um, my other two children, because Seven's been coming more faithfully, and my other two, they really um, just need prayer to motivation, more push, because um, they kind of push him back. And also for my husband, um, he's going through things, and he's hard-headed, and I'm just praying that <laughs> God would... <laughs> I want to thank you. I love Lori because she's so committed. She's teaching all the children homeschooling. They have special needs in the fact that they're sick and some of them have disabilities. But she is a mother of all mothers. She is working with her babies, homeschooling them at the hospital night and day when they need to be. I've seen her there. And uh, I just want to admire Sister Lori. Lori, whenever you are in need, you let your church know we love you. And did we give you a Bible story, buddy? All right, you take and give this one to your husband. Huh? I'm meddling because I got a license. I'm double old nine or something. But we're going to pray because we're going to ask the Lord to bless this couple. I love them. I love both of them. They know that. They already know that. I'm not saying nothing new. I want to be involved in everybody's family to bless them. That's my job. Amen? And I take it seriously. We're going to pray for them, and we're going to pray for... Where, where is uh, Jeremiah? Come on back up here, boy. Hey, come on up here. He went and sit by his granddad. That's a good place of comfort, isn't it? All right, we're going to let... Um, Ray, you're a visitor here today, aren't you, Ray? Yes. You know brother, brother, brother Alvarado? He's your friend. Yes. Would you pray for these children for me? Can you do that? Lord, we thank you today for being able to gather together here in your name, feeling the Holy Spirit here whipping around this, this church. We, we give you thanks and, and we ask for con your con continued, continued love and blessings on all the people in here for the things that we're praying for here up One day, 
One day, Egypt or Jeremiah going to be pastor this church. And I'm going to be looking down and say, I knew that was in those kids. Amen. You don't know what God's going to do. You just don't know. Amen. I thank God for that. That's wonderful as far as I'm concerned. Amen. So thank you so much. We're going to be ready now to lift our offering. We're going to be ready to give to God. I want the men to continue singing with the choir. And I want some new men come along and join the choir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Nothing wrong with giving your time to the Lord. When we were in the world, we gave our time to the devil. Is that right? Closed a few nightclubs in our day. Yes, we did. And still was game for partying. Now we got too old. We got to go home and go to bed. But you ought to give your time to the Lord. We're going to hear from our deacon. And then we're going to be ready. And on the first Sunday in June, we're going to have a short service and we're going to go down to the park and have a nice picnic. Isn't that nice? Amen. And we're going to have a picnic, a church picnic. going to have a, a short service here. And then they're going to have nice things, games, food, fun for the whole family. Amen. We're the closest church to the picnic ground. Amen. Yeah. And to the stadium. So we ought to be using it, right? Amen. Amen. And then we want you to dress appropriately for picnic. Right. You can change it for picnic after church. So don't wear no Daisy Dukes up in here. We'll have to give you a choir robe, amen, so we can have a de decent service. All right, y'all remember I said that. All right, here we go. These are the scriptures for giving. In reference to God and his holy word, let there be no more walking and talking during the reading of the scripture. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 through 2. Not concerning collation of the saints, if I had given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God had prophesied. him. There be no gallon when I call. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. But just I say, he who is so sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who is so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always have all sufficient in all things, may abound to every good worker. Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet he hath robbed me. But ye say, Where is have he robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hope. If I will not open your windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. May God have blessing on the reading here and understanding of his holy word. Amen. All right. We're going to let you give now for those who'd like to give in the benevolent offering. Ralph would have the benevolent plate. This is for the mission and educational work of the church. And then for the building fund, we ask Deacon George to get the building fund basket. If you'd like to give to the building fund, we invite you to do that. And then also we want to give the tithes and offering that may come to the Lord's altar and bless what you give and then leave it in the receptacle there on the miracle jar. Is that all right? You may come at this time. All who wish to give. Now, if you're giving to the benevolent, raise your hand or the building fund. Deacon George will come and get your offering. Thank you. Thank you.
those that did not have to be here. May we use this money for the upkeep of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, each and every one. I want to encourage you to come back to Sunday school. Amen. Amen. It starts at 845. What did I say? 845. If you'll be here for Sunday school, I want the men have um, slacked off some. Yeah. And uh, they're off by 50%. I saw that this morning. I want you men to come to Sunday school. Christian men need to be taught how to be disciples so they can teach others how to be disciples. If every saved soul would save a soul, then every soul would be saved. So we want the men to come back to Sunday school. You need this. You don't know how bad you need this. As you see the day approaching, with what is happening in the Middle East and Iran and Israel, Hezbollah and Iraq, this could blow up at any moment. And I don't believe we'd be ready for it. Not emotionally and spiritually. And then the Lord could come and just, boom, uh, rapture his church. You, you wouldn't know what would be going on. And all the good people be gone and you'd be left. Uh, you'd be left, the only one, the only one left, and you say, in your family. Everybody else is gone because they love the Lord. You better learn what's happening so you can pray harder, focus harder, and then get your house in order. How many know they need to get their house in order? Get your house in order. Amen. Don't waste any time. You don't have time. Time is not on our side. With what is happening now, you can wake up and CNN be taken over by another country. You'll be looking for your favorite person and somebody else be sitting in that chair. So you better be ready, and I want you to be ready. Um, and then help our young people learn how to handle money. They have no concept of it. Help them to know how to measure money that it costs uh, to make money, time and effort. And, and they need to learn that and then teach them current events that are happening. We, they, they knock down the bridge over there in Maryland and, uh, no, and young people say, what bridge? We used to, I'm going to say this now, but we used to watch the news in my house when I was growing up, Walter Cronkite came on. How many remember that? I'm talking about 5.30 and he ended by saying that and that's the way it is. But the whole idea was you had a moment, moment where you learn current events. If you don't know what's happening in your world, you don't, you're don't. dizzy. You don't know what's going on. Amen? Amen? So I want to encourage you parents to talk current events and talk about how else will your children learn what's happening in the world. Amen? Amen. All right. They used to have College Bowl that came on when I was at Sam Houston. College Bowl, you'd have to learn all these answers of current events. And they have a teacher that that just taught them nothing but current events so they would be ready for the college bowl. And our kids have no concept of God, no concept of current events, and they're just going along. It's a shame what's happening in our schools. Won't let them mention anything about God, won't let them talk about their own history, and then want to close down diversity when the person who saves a senator's life may be a black or brown or yellow man that they didn't want to go to college in the first place. I just saved your life. Huh? It sounds like a Cleon. I should have died. Well, then I'll let you die there. <laughs> but racism has no place in America. Though it's embedded, it has no place. And we've got to teach our children. And our response is not to retaliate, but to love everybody. And if they don't love us, we're going about our business. Amen? All right, I'm through with that now. We're going about our business, do the best we can. And uh, we're not trying to retaliate against anybody. I think that's what they fear. We're not as mean as you. <laughs> All right, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. All right. Shall we stand? And next, uh, next Sunday is first Sunday. Is that right? No, it's the fifth Sunday. Fifth Sunday. Fifth Sunday is next Sunday. Everybody come fifth Sunday, and on the first Sunday, we're going to have dinner. The first Sunday, we're going to have dinner, not the fifth Sunday. I don't want to work, Sister Arnella, too hard. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you.
with you until we meet and meet again. Come on here. God be with you. Now, may the, pr the prayer. Okay. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together and letting us all make it to the end of service, God. Help us carry this word with us throughout the week, Lord. Help us to do your word and not just be a hearer of the word, Lord. Help us save somebody else from the world, Lord, as these are evil times, Lord. Keep us in peace and make it unshakable peace and keep our faith strong, Lord, as you lead and guide us throughout our weeks and our children, Lord. Protect our children and help us to teach them at home and to protect them at school, too even though we can't always be there, God. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shake hands with your preacher. Amen. Shake hands with the preacher. Amen.